Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, uh, co-founder at Rack N, and I'm here with a digital rebar demo for version 4.2 that has some really amazing features in it. This is about contexts. Um, contexts allow you to do something just completely unprecedented. You can actually take a workflow and then have it w run in different locations. So normally a workflow would be on a runner in a machine doing work, but you could transfer the workflows context away from the machine and onto the endpoint or a Kubernetes cluster or something like that where you actually want to do work against another API on behalf of the system or you might have a um, switch where you can't actually install the runner you still want to take actions you can actually build workflows that have no physical machine but only interact with another system as a machine um, incredibly powerful uh, concept because not only does it do the proxy and create full workflows against the proxy, but it also lets you shift back and forth. So you can do a run that does things on the machine and then moves to an outside of the machine context and back as part of this work. I'm gonna take you through that whole process. So the video is gonna get a little long because I have a tutorial that shows you every step of the way from demo content that you can copy. Uh, this is a licensed feature, although you can use it with a trial license. So if you get a rack and trial license, you can, replicate everything I'm doing with the 20 machines or less renewable trial. Um, so please check this out, totally uh, try it, play with it. Powerful, powerful feature available in uh, Digital Rebar 4.1, which is the October release, October 2019 release. Uh, so let me show you what that this looks like. I have a machine here in, in this Rebar instance that is, it actually doesn't, it's not a machine at all. It's just a reference to a container uh, and what I can do here is if I go ahead and run the Terraform create, this is going to do a Terraform apply step and pull in um, basically a simple plan that takes the machine's name, in this case cake, and uh, like a, a bake, a baking the cake, uh, pulling the cake out of the oven so you can see what it looks like. Then we're going to show you how we make the cake. Uh, and it literally is running a Terraform plan. I don't know how easy that is for you to see. Down at the bottom, it's actually going through and creating this machine running a Terraform plan. Not, there's no machine, it's literally just running it in a Terraform container on my endpoint. So when it does that, I can come over into my Amazon account and you can see me running this system and I'm, I'm bringing it up. Uh, so you can imagine a use case here where you had some operations that you wanted to perform, say in Terraform, as part of a normal provisioning operation. You can build a plan dynamically. This is a dynamically built plan. Inject a whole bunch of information that you wanted to take actions on, run that operation, and then at the end of the workflow or during the workflow, you could then do a destroy or you could leave the, the systems going. And we'll, we'll talk about more about how we've done that because the Terraform functionality itself in this demo is crazy powerful. We're actually storing the state files on digital rebar. So these aren't ephemeral state files, they're persisted state files, so you could run them from anywhere. So that's that. Let me go through and I'm gonna clean up a little bit. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna run the destroy operation here, and that will then tear down. It's already going through that apply operation and doing a destroy. Same thing, uh, here's the destroy uh, coming through. We'll show you the back end of all this stuff so you can see it. It's all pretty straightforward digital rebar workflows, stages and tasks. Okay, so that's the that's the cake. Let me show you how we, we get there. Uh, the things I'm gonna show you are out of my personal context demo. This will ultimately move into digital rebar, but you should be able to find a, a version of it in vehicle context demo. Uh, and let's see, and this is a system that I've set up where I haven't done any of the configuration. So I haven't done the plugins, I haven't done any of the bits and pieces. I'm walking you through a completely new uh, provisioning system. And so the first thing I need to do, I've already checked out the code. I'm gonna bundle it, so DRP CLI, contents. If you don't know how to do this, uh, look at our color demo. Uh, that is designed to teach you how to build content packs and manage them. Uh, bundle, uh, context demo. So now I've built that, that content bundle and I can say DRP CLI uh, contents. This might actually not work. Uh, upload. All right, let's see. That did work, although it's, oh, it's asking me for 
uh, contexts. And let's see, those should be okay. So when I added that, uh, you'll see there in 4.1, we have a new field called contexts. And that content pack defined two contexts. One's a runner, one's a Terraform. Uh, and those, those contexts are using the, uh, where's the context? The engine is Docker context, which I have not loaded yet. I'll explain how to do that. This is a plugin, it's implemented as a plugin, and it's telling it to run a digital rebar Terraform container. Another thing I don't have, uh, so we're gonna have to build the pieces and parts to support that. Um, pretty straightforward in, in all those pieces. And then we have a whole bunch of stages and components that got added in this. And I'm gonna take you through all of those pieces so uh, the first thing we, we're going to need to do is, is to get the plugin. Uh, and the plugin, let's see if, the, if it's landed in the catalog yet. It's going to be under experimental. Uh, that is not it. Terraform context is the, um, I didn't I didn't fix one of my names. That's the context I just uploaded. I used to call it that. All right, so I need to get the plugin and upload the plugin by hand because it's not in here. So I will do that. Right. Uh, it's going to be in Go, source. GitHub, backend, plugins. So what I'm doing is I'm just navigating through my tree where I built plugins. Here's the Docker context happily sitting at the top. And I can just upload that context. So now I've added that plugin. Uh, so there's the Docker context. If I come over into plugins, you will now see I have one plugin, the Docker context plugin. Uh, that is what allows me to run a container as a context. Uh, pretty straightforward. We have another one called Danger Zone, which literally just runs things in as threads off Digital Rebar, aptly named. Um, and we're, we're sure to build some other contexts. And the Docker context actually works not just for Docker, but for Podman. So you don't have to use the Docker um, install and run a service. You can use Podman um, just as well. It supports both. All right, so now we're getting closer. I now have the plugin installed. What I don't have is containers yet. Um, and so to do that, I have two Docker files and I'm gonna need both of them. Uh, let me show you what they look like. I can just get them. So the runner Docker file just is, pulls in Alpine. It adds in bash and JQ, which uh, the CLI depends on for certain scripting tasks. So we do include those. We're gonna copy the CLI over into the uh, user bin, make sure it's runnable. And then we're just gonna create an entry point that tells it to process jobs. This is literally a container that runs the agent, nothing else. Um, what you'll notice though, is that I don't have, so if you're reading the LS, I, I don't have my uh, CLI uh, yet. And you do need a current CLI, you need a 4.1 CLI for this. So let me see where my CLI is, DRP CLI. And then I'm gonna copy this, uh, I just want a local copy and that'll copy that into the Docker run file. Yep, I got it. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna copy uh, the runner Docker file to Docker file. This is not very exciting, um, but from that, and then I'm going to do a Docker uh, build. I'm gonna tag this as digital rebar runner and build that, that container, pretty straightforward. So now if I do a Docker images list, you will see I have digital rebar runner. And then what I wanna do is I wanna do the same thing. Uh, let's see, remove my Docker file, copy my Docker file. So I'm gonna do the same thing for Terraform. And in this one, I'm gonna call it cleverly Terraform. Uh, let me show you what that one looks like. 
So in this one, the only difference in that Docker file is that I've started from the HashiCorp Terraform Lite container. So it's exactly the same. I'm just adding the CLI to an existing container that has Terraform's binaries in it. And then I'm creating the endpoint so it starts the agent. Um, that's, that's it. This is, this is how simple this, this whole thing is. I'm literally creating a container that will be an agent and has the tools that it needs pre-installed because I've pulled in the HashiCorp Terraform container. It could work with any container or a custom built container. You're just literally throwing in the agent and making it available to Digital Rebar. And when it starts, Digital Rebar will inject all the things it needs to do to actually run the runner on that container. Okay, so I've done that. If I do a Docker PS, you'll see I don't have any containers running at the moment. That will change as we start spinning up for this, for this demo. So I've done my prerequisites. Uh, I've got the plugins installed. That's excellent. And I have, let's see, I created a couple of workflows in, in here. So I have a uh, Terraform Create, Terraform Destroy that I showed you. And I have a demo context. Uh, in the demo context, this is really straightforward. It's just for, for demos. It's got a single stage for container demo. Uh, and that has a single task. In that task, all we're doing is proving that we can run the container. So I want to do this first, just to sh sort of show you what the, the process looks like. One nuance of, of this demo is that it creates a file. So the first time we run it, it will not have the file and we'll see that as an error. The second time it runs it, it will have the file. So the, it'll show that the container is persisting as a, as a machine. So in this case, what I want to do is I'm going to create the machine over here. Uh, I'm going to do this from the CLI because we have, we, there's a little bit of metadata required uh, that's not exposed in the UX right now, but it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to, I'm going to do, do a DRP machines I'm going to create a machine and I'm going to name this one uh, to keep it from being confusion. We're going to call this uh, Recake. And then we're going to give it some metadata. And this is actually very important for the way uh, contacts are working. So, what I want to do is since this isn't a real machine, I have to tell it to use a base context. It's a little bit head expanding. And I'm going to call this the runner base context. And before I hit enter, I'm going to show you what this means. Because you're like, ah, wait, I went too fast. Contexts, I have two contexts here. The first one is the runner. In the runner context, I am using the Docker context, so that plugin that allows me to spin up a container and run the agent in a container. And then I am telling it to use the digital rebar runner image. So that's, that says when you're in this context, use that as a container. Hopefully that makes sense. All these pieces are going to start to fit together in a minute. You're like, wait a second. Uh, there's a lot of pieces. It's not, it, it takes a little bit of thinking because this is a different way, but it's fundamentally, it's a machine running in a container. It's the way I would way I would think of it. And telling it the base context is runner does that. If you don't include base context runner, it's going to assume that there's a physical machine with a runner running as an agent, just like the other machine I have. That base context is empty. So when I do this, I created a machine over here. In that machine, here's the recake thing. There's no IP address. It's telling me that it's using the runner context. It's a new new field here. And it's actually run this, the discover base and sledgehammer wait because that's the unknown uh, profile, which is completely normal. The thing that's amazing here is now when I say Docker PS, this is the runner that I have set up. So it's now actually running that context. If I start uh, create a new cake, uh, I will not call this cake. I will call this uh, demo. When I do that and say Docker PS, what you'll see here is that now we actually have two containers running. If I delete one of these, it'll actually remove that container. It'll destroy the machine and remove the container. That's what that base context comment is doing. Uh, and so this would be, if you had something you couldn't install an agent on, this is exactly how you would make the system uh, 
be able to do a long running task where you had to do workflows against an API like a switch or a storage device um, or a cloud, however, however you want to see it. Uh, and when we do the Terraform one, we're gonna bounce into that container and bounce out of the container. So it's a short, it's a short lived action. Uh, so if I come back over to the demo, we'll switch to demo. I pick my workflow and go to demo context, start that. In that context, it's actually gonna run this demo. Oops, it's already done, so uh, I didn't get to see the task. So here's the first time I ran it. Uh, they don't, we don't have the file, like I said, and here's that, that job. It was super fast, it just ran that one, that one task. If I come back over here, clear this, and then rerun it, once again, super fast, uh, in this case, it actually had the file. So that container is persisting. It's not like coming in and out. It's actually a running running job, and it, it retains whatever we've done in that, that container while it exists. Um, and the same thing is true. So when the container is running, it's going to pull state information just like any runner action. So I have access to all the digital rebar information, the machine's profiles, metadata, parameters, right, everything within that. One of the changes that's coming in, in the next version is the ability to create spe uh, more uh, broadly used machine tokens so I can actually start accessing limited use uh, features of digital rebar in general from a machine with special, very restricted controls. Great power um, and an interesting feature directly impacts um, what we can do. So let me show you a little bit about how these bits and pieces work. I'm gonna go over to a code, code control system. Uh, and, and show you what we did with this. Uh, and the reason why this is important is to drill into how the Terraform pieces are working. I actually want to show you um, sort of how the, how the bits and pieces get built up. This is pretty straightforward. Here's the workflow I already showed you. It has a stage called container demo. That stage container demo over here um, runs the task container demo. I'm not super creative with the naming here. And in container demo, uh, it literally is just running back through and, and doing this. One thing you'll notice when I, in the task here, oh, sorry, in the stage, I just used whatever the base context is. So I could take this same system and I could run that because I didn't specify the container I relied on the base. I could go to my machine. I could run my demo context and it's gonna run uh, this, in this case on a VM doing exactly the same operations. There is nothing in the code I just showed you that is specific to running in a container. It's just a task, it just ran, it did its thing. I didn't force it to, to change context at all. I just said run this in the context that you're in, which the base context for the demo machine is a container for this actual virtual machine I have running on my desktop. It's actually the virtual machine and it ran it on the virtual machine. So completely the same functionality. I keep reinforcing this point because one of the things that, that is easy to lose in this is this is just regular workflow. Just we're just, just shifting where it operates. Okay, very, very interesting potential with this. And as you get used to the idea, you'll mind, you're, you'll see there's, there's crazy things you can, you can do from it. All right, so let's, let's talk about the Terraform case. Terraform case is a little bit more interesting uh, from that perspective. So in the Terraform uh, create workflow, in this case, we're just running a single stage called Terraform apply. From that, we have two tasks. This one says context Terraform, which means we're gonna switch the context to the next task to the Terraform context. So anytime this stage runs, it's gonna go through this process and set that the context into Terraform so that I can run it in that context every single time. I could add tasks behind this that would set the context back to default, so just context colon empty, or I can do context back to runner, um, but basically this command allows us to force the Terraform, the next stage, sorry, the next task, into a context. And that would let me take, create a, a longer workflow and then bounce things around back and forth into different contexts as part of the workflow. Uh, destroy is actually exactly the same, but the difference is we've supplied a different parameter. So in this case, the plan action is destroy. In the apply case, the plan action is apply. So exactly the same underlying task, 
we're just feeding it some different information at, to, in the stage to take different paths. Uh, if you haven't seen this behavior, it's, uh, we've, we've been parameterizing lots and lots of functions. Stages are a very powerful place to have parameters. So now if I look at Terraform Apply, we have some really, um, this is, ends up being very simple functionality. If you're used to Terraform, what you'll see is there is a standard resource definition, AWS instance. I'm taking an AMI from uh, parameters, an instance type from parameters that have safe defaults. I'm taking my uh, machine name and I'm throwing the URL for DRP into the tag in Amazon, super handy. And then I have these two templates. So this is, this is really important. The, the plan is actually generated dynamically and it's templated. So you can actually build standard components into these plans and then reuse them. Uh, in this case, if I look at my template and I look at the first one, the Terraform backend, Terraform backend is using the HTTP backend. So this is where the state of that plan is stored. And it's actually stored in the files under Terraform states for that machine. I haven't run this yet, so if I jump over to my files, you'll, you won't see that path in here. But when I, after I run it, the, the, the state file will actually be stored back in Digital Rebar. This is really important because I'm not counting on file persistence to store my plan. If I run this plan and then do a whole bunch of other work or destroy the container, I'll still have the state so I can do the destruction operation. That's basically built in. In this case, we, we didn't have that advanced security feature for the tokens, so there is a Terraform state username and password. Uh, they default to Rocket Skates um, that will store that state for you. If you're gonna do this, please, please <laughs> create a special user that just has access to files for this and, and set those values, of course. So that's, that's how we do the back end. And then the AWS piece, I've just created the provider. And then in the provider, I provide the region, my access key, and my secret key. So I would define those. And all those are defined up here in parameters. So none of the parameters here are ad hoc. They're all predefined. So you can come in and, and set what those are. Uh, if I came into the machine I created over here and took my demo machine, I can come over here and I'm going to edit. Ooh, look, it did go high inventory of a container. Uh, AWS key, I can add that one in. AWS uh, secret. And these are secure params, so they're, they're stored encrypted. Uh, this is obviously not my key. <laughs> um, I'm doing it like this so that when the system runs, it's gonna pull it from here. I have already, uh, for the demo, where is it, predefined my global, whoops, I haven't predefined, this is a completely new system, all right. So I'm gonna predefine, I'm gonna put those in there uh, so that we'll, the system will work. For right now, there's nothing, so it's just gonna, just gonna uh, try to run the plan with bad keys, because um, I wanna be able to show you what it looks like when I generate all these files. Uh, so at that point, I've done all of the prereqs. What is gonna happen when I build that stage is it's going to, let me go back to what that task look, looks like, Terraform apply. So it's going to generate the plan out of the pieces and parts that I showed you. And then it's going to run our Terraform apply template, which I haven't shown you yet. So the Terraform apply template looks pretty much like what you'd expect. It's gonna do an initialization. It's going to terraform init. Does no color so that we don't we don't pollute the logs with uh, garbage characters. Uh, if I have debug enabled, uh, it'll do a, it'll plan for me, which is handy. And then really simply, it's going to run the terraform. It's going to do an apply or destroy depending on this parameter, and it's going to automatically approve it. So literally, the, all this stage does is do a terraform init and then a terraform apply or a terraform destroy. Um, and it's gonna produce nice logs and it's gonna show me everything that's going on. Um, and because the plan includes the back end, it's gonna pull the state from the DRP instance. I don't have to worry about where the files are or anything like that. It's just gonna run the plan, do its thing, and then, then move on to the next stage in the, in the workflow. Whew, that's a lot. I, I'm going at, at light speed because this is a long video. There's a lot to cover. 
but if you take your time and look through this, everything I'm showing you is just in that GitHub repo and you can sort of piece it apart and play with it. So over here, if I come in, I go to demo and I say, all right, demo, I want to do the Terraform create workflow now. I just start that. That is gonna come in and do this Terraform apply and it's going in and it's running it for the first time. So it's actually got to pull it down. It's got to pull in the back end. It's telling you it's doing all that. It's got to download the plugin because I haven't initialized it yet. That looks great. And then it's saying, hey, wait a second. I have invoked you and there are no security credentials. So it's going to fail. And if all this looks right, which it does, uh, job failed. Totally, that is correct. It did fail because I didn't have the credentials. I'm going to pause the video and add my credentials behind the scenes. All right, so I did that. Uh, and I, I stored those in the global profile so they would be available. Where is my global profile? Profiles, global. And since they're sort of encrypted, you're not, you're not going to see them by default on the screen. They're hidden, um, which is good. That's what you expect. Um, and before I jump off, I want to go to the job that failed um, and show you this is the wrong machine. This is the right machine. I want to go to the job that failed and show you something really interesting. Uh, this might be a new feature. If you haven't, we had it for a long time, but a lot of people don't realize you can do this in digital rebar. This is the job log, which is great, very important. And if I close this, down under it, there's actually a template rendering information. You can open this and see what the templates that were rendered for that job were. So those two files I talked about, here is the uh, Terraform plan. So you can see this is actually the back end with the, all the correct information injected for it. This is the provider information with my uh, great secret and key it set up. And then this is the resource information with all that information injected in it. So one of the things that you can do, of course, is, is actually see what these templates look. This doesn't persist um, after the, uh, the next job is run. It's only available when, when you're in the middle of the job. Um, but while you're doing that, you can actually come and see exactly what templates were run for the system. It's super helpful for troubleshooting. Same is true with this is the actual uh, plan that did the apply. And so you can see Terraform apply and all that. All right, so that's great. Um, what I want to do is, is fix this. So to make that work, I'm going to have to come in. Uh, I could do it in demo. I can come in and remove those, those keys. I could also just use the other, um, use the other uh, machine both of them will work which I'll, I'll end up doing both for you but in this case if I would come over to Terraform apply I can take the cheat and just do a, a runnable button and that's gonna cause that job to rerun excellent and so in this case what you'll see is we've got the same thing going but now my credentials work and I didn't have to reload it was super fast if I'm quick I can do a docker PS over here and what you'll see in here is now the container that's running is not the runner container it's switched shut that one down and now it's doing the digital rebar terraform container um, and it's actually running that that work that workload as the context um, and so if i jump over to the machine you'll see in here there's now it says context it's the terraform context and it just completed that operation so terraform has been applied if i come over to instances here you will see my demo contain my demo uh, machine that's running uh, all pretty cool I can do the same thing over here with the cake and run the terraform apply uh, in this case once again it's going to spin up another container and, and all that's going to be uh, happy from that perspective and, and do its thing uh, and I will get another there you go here's the cake uh, container and let's see, so I'm going to let those run for a second. Uh, see if there's something in this that I haven't covered yet uh, while those machines get to build. It's, this is, at the end, pretty straightforward if you think about it, right? We've got a workflow. We want to run a, a sequence of actions, tasks. We want to do that where we don't have a machine or where the machine's not available. Um, and so we're transitioning that workflow to run in a different context, uh, in this case, a with Terraform in it, but it could be something else. Uh, 
there's a lot of different options for this. And then you're free to build whatever tasks and stages and work that you need to get done done. So if you have some out of you know out of band actions, or if you need to make calls against a switch, you could uh, spin up a container that had a switch napalm in it, and then take actions for that switch using credentials for that switch. It's very similar to Terraform. You could even, if you had Terraform interactions that you need to get done, you could incorporate Terraform operations into your machine provisioning workflows, um, take advantage of the extensive integration library that Terraform adds, but not have to do it in a way that isolates Terraform from the broader workflow. Just integrate it straight in, store the state files, and keep running. So from that perspective, I've, I've got these. I do want to do a little bit of housekeeping, so I'm going to go ahead and let the system destroy um, those containers. That looks great. Uh, make sure that, yep, we're housekeeping, so things are going away. And then what I'd like to do is I'm, I'm done uh, with this. Let's see what my actions are. Uh, I don't know. Looks like it is destroying it just fine. OK. Uh, so that's all going fine. I'm going to let these tasks finish. Shouldn't take very long. And then I'm going to delete the machines. And when I do that, what you'll see happen is those two containers that I've done are going to get torn down uh, as part of that operation. So there we go. So here I'm going to go ahead and delete the machines, remove, all good. And then over here I'm going to do the same docker ps command. And, and digital rebar has torn down the containers because the, the machines using those contexts no longer exist. Whew. And at that point we are done. Um, I've been able to make all those things go. I could, um, and I'll leave it as a lesson for the listener. Um, you could literally take one of these contexts. Um, actually, it's not even that hard. So if I just put Terraform create here, it's going to switch that agent, run the Terraform apply, and the same thing is going to happen. I'm going to spin up a machine here. So I'm taking a machine that I had proven to you running a physical uh, machine, a, a, you know, agent on the machine. I've transferred that agent control over to uh, digital rebar uh, the context and it's going to do go do the same thing all right so yeah you can weave that into a workflow a broader workflow as, as a follow-up uh, instruction super powerful stuff uh, i hope this was helpful i know it's a lot of information please please join us in our slack community um, ask us questions we're super excited to see what use cases you think of for this this capability it's it's amazingly powerful um, with great power comes great responsibility, of course. So uh, be careful out there and let us know how it's going. Uh, this is Rob Hirschfeld signing out.